Hello, and today I'm going to show you very quickly a common occurrence of failed SQL jobs and why they fail. In this particular demonstration, we're going to have a user called Joker. We have a database called Google, and we have a domain which we're using for the lab. We also have a remote file share that we're accessing to import data. In our scenario, we are running an import job and that fails. And that is the first part of our sequence of events. Now, in this particular scenario, Joker has read permissions to the directory on the remote machine. He has bulk admin access to run the bulk admin task at the SQL layer. And he has DBO owner to the database. But his job still fails. The reason for this is because the network access is executed under the SQL agent account, not the owner of the job. So even though he has rights both on the share and on the SQL server, because the job itself at that part is running under the SQL agent, and the SQL agent does not have access, it effectively fails. To understand that, we look at the query that's running. So this is the structure of the job on the left-hand side. And we've broken it up into sections based on the content of what it's doing. So as an example, we start off with creating a table for the import. That table is requiring you to modify by creating it. This can only be done by database owner or database uh, DDL admin. So the, these are create, alter, and drop statements second part is to run the bulk insert. Bulk insert can only be run by sysadmin or bulk admin roles. So these again require now server elevated privileges on the SQL side. After that, we are selecting a data source that is outside of the server. And since local account, as an example, if the SQL agent is running under the local system account, it cannot access a remote file share unless that server is added to the file share. So it's not running under the user's account, even though the SQL statement is executing as that user, it's not executing the network section of that as the user. It's executing it as the SQL agent. And if the service is running under local system, then the local system is the one that would need to be accessing the file share. Uh, then we have a select statement, which again, DB owner or DB reader of data, not a problem. And then finally, we're asking it to drop the table, which again takes us to database owner or uh, database DDL admin. So being able to create and drop the structure. So to demonstrate this in the real world, I have two virtual machines set up, running one running SQL and the other one running Active Directory to act both as our file share resource, in this case we have a, a share one, and also to demonstrate the, the different accounts that we can have. So we have our user set up on the domain, and we have a SQL engine and agent account. However, you can see we are actually running under the local accounts at the moment. So we'll come back to that in a, a little while. For the first part, we're going to look at the network job, which we've got here. We can see there's only one step. And if we edit it, we can see what it does. We have the create table. We have from a remote file share. And we have the select and then finally the drop. This is currently running as the administrator. And if we go to the file share, we can check the permissions and see who has access. And we can see administrator has read write and administrator has owner, etc. So we're going to run this. And we're going to see a failure. As you can see, it's failed. Now the reason that this has failed, if we explore the job history a moment, we're going to get a network error here. So executed under and then you have the server and does not have access. 
which is quite simple because we can see that this is executed as a server. Okay, that makes sense. The server does not have access on this share. But what happens more often than not is that these are not executed under the server accounts, they're executed under a user account. So let's say that we have our user, Joker, and we're going to run the account. Now we know that we're going to need um, bulk admin. So just to prevent that from being our first failure, I'm going to give Joker access as a bulk admin and he's going to need access to our Google database and he's going to need at least DDL admin and he's also going to need uh, data reader. So he should now have the rights he needs to perform this job. So we are now going to run the job again and it's going to fail again. And if we look at the reasons for the failure, do the job history, we can now see running as Joker. And first problem we see is that we already have this table in the database. So we have an issue that the job partly ran before and has failed, but they didn't get to the cleanup. So I'm going to clean that up. So I'm just going to drop that table. And that should now be fine to run again. And we see it's failed. And when we look at the failure reason, we can see executed as Joker, bulk admin because could not operate an open access denied. Now we know that Joker has access over here because we can go look at the permissions and see he does have read access to the file. So this is usually where people get stuck because they're thinking, well, it actually ran as Joker and he has permission, so why do I have a problem? You know, because it's not running as that, as the local system. The agent account is running as local. Now there are three ways around this. I could put the SQL server and this is the machine account, and add that to the share. That would grant the access because it's running under the local account. I could put everyone, which is obviously not recommended, mostly because then anyone on the network can grab that file. Or I can change the account that this is running under. So I'm just going to prove that this is the machine account, first of all. And I'm going to quickly run the job again to prove that this has resolved the issue. So I'm going to drop the table so that we don't have that execution problem. I'm going to run the network job. And it's now running under the local account. Oops. Let's see what failed this time. Ah, insert permissions. So this is a, an insert permission. We don't have enough permission. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's because I didn't give him data writer. So here, give him data writer. He's got read, write, and change. I'm going to drop that temp table because it probably didn't get that far. I'll run the job. But you see the network access has disappeared and job completed successfully. So that was one option. So we're going to take away that network access for the server. And we know that it will fail because that's what we changed. So what's the other option? The other option is we can start the SQL agent under an account which has access. So I can turn around and find the SQL agent account that I created earlier. So I can go for the domain. I go SQL agent. I put in the password. I apply. Because this will cause service to restart. Yes, so it's going to stop and start the service. And that's done. 
we can now see this running under the agent account. Now, if I run the job again, it will still fail because the agent account still doesn't have access to the share. So I'm now going to go and I'm going to add SQL agent. and have read access. I update the share. I am now going to run the SQL job again. So import via network, run it, and you can see successful. And those are the options and why it fails. Thank you for your time.